Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Cheryl Martin, Deputy Director of ARPA-E. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the sixth annual RPE Energy Innovation Summit. It's a pleasure to be with all of you this morning. We have a very exciting program for you this year, including conversations with Janet Napolitano, Hank Paulson, Secretary Moniz, Ratan Tata, and a number of others. There's a wonderful lineup of panel sessions. I'm sure many of you have been in our morning ones already. And we have more than 300 technologies on display in the showcase, which will open tomorrow morning. There will be some amazing projects to see. I wanted to let everyone know, as, as of this moment, there's only two uh, changes to the, uh, to the summit program that's the printed program, as you may have noticed compared to the online one. Uh, Brian Dietz of the White House will be joining us tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock for the conversation with um, David Sandalow. And so I will be taking the stage now for the opening comments. And so, walk with me. Walk with me to a place where technology, radical technology ideas, are tried and tested. Walk with me to a place where teams come together to take on seemingly impossible problems. Walk with me to a space where sometimes it all comes together and the science works and the teams and the partners and the markets push and pull and we find value and then products emerge which will change how we generate, store and use energy. Walk with me to the world of ARPA-E. In just a few minutes, I'll take you through some vignettes, 10 of them, that highlight some of the innovations that RPE has funded. Some of those innovations just at their very nascent stages of development. Others that have been much more fully developed and are actually products in the marketplace. We're really starting to see those products come to fruition now. And we're very, very excited by that. And so if we think about, you know, where should we start? RPE invests in challenge the limits of technologies. The example here from 4O Energy, where the team basically is taking the highest powers lasers you can imagine and putting them miles through miles of fiber optic cable to enable all types of applications to happen. But they've done this by overcoming a phenomenon called stimulated brillion scattering. And you say that from the stage three times, and I'm all in for you. But the team overcame these challenges, and they developed a product into something, as you see, it's right here. And it's making a difference. They recently demonstrated the ability of these systems to handle even the highest intensity lasers out there, seven megawatts per square centimeter. At seven megawatts, I don't have that unit wrong, right? You think about concentrating that much energy in a controlled and efficient fashion. Now that could certainly change your mind about what's possible. And the team's currently able to demonstrate value for this technology with a number of industrial customers. And they're currently working to perform increasingly difficult demonstrations so that they can culminate with drilling the highest density crystalline rocks out there. And that will change what's possible for all kinds of applications from geothermal to the oil and gas industry. Now, RPE also invests in, cha in challenging our limits about systems. And here's one with other lab where they went after challenging the whole idea that we need expensive tracking systems in order to move our solar panels to follow the sun. And instead, they went after a much more simple concept that can be made out of plastic. Plastic that, if it was going to be produced, could be mass manufactured in a process exactly like that we used to make water bottles today. And so you think about challenging the assumption about the gears and the gearboxes and the motors 
and get it down to something as simple as plastic. Well, all of a sudden you have something that's on a different trajectory than the current steel and aluminum systems that could mean a 50% reduction in cost. I'd be pretty excited about that if I was in the solar industry right now. In order to do this work, they actually formed a company called Sunfolding. And Sunfolding is, you know, proudly for us, one of the 30 companies that have already been formed to advance technologies invested in by ARPA-E. Now, in addition to small companies that are just getting started, we have other companies, startup companies, like Fluidic, that are also out there with real products solving international problems. Fluidic has developed the first, and as of yet still the only, commercial metal air battery system for grid level storage. They did that by overcoming something inherent to metal air systems, is their issue with water, by, do, by putting in place an ionic liquid system. That allows this system to work well and cost effectively, even in highly humid environments, such as those found in many parts of Asia and Latin America. And so with that technology, the Fluidic team has been able to demonstrate support for outages for over 200,000 hours of outages at critical sites across the world for over 500,000 actual outages. And you think about that, 25 minutes for an outage on average, up to 10 hours, even 24. Ordinarily, those types of things are only the purview of diesel generators. Because we're actually using a storage system like they have here, we have a situation where 1,500 tons of CO2 emissions were avoided. It's a very, very compelling value proposition for both those getting the storage as well as the environment. So while we're really excited about products entering the marketplace, we're also really excited about some of the developments that we're seeing in the lab at the same time, challenging what we think about battery chemistries. Here's two teams, east and west coast. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but at Harvard and USC, who in the past year reported results showing that water-based systems with no metals, simply chemicals like quinones, which are known components of rhubarb for those who aren't up on your quinone chemistry, but you should study it as a chemist. Urge you to embrace uh, your organic chemistry class again. But they've demonstrated that these molecules have tremendous potential. Now, as you can see here, these are clearly not ready to go on the grid tomorrow. However, we're excited about these as a tip of the iceberg development that could challenge what we all think about what is necessary in order to have battery chemistries work. And I look forward to seeing these developments move ahead. RPE is excited as well about teams. We talk about it all the time. We try to get people to work together. And a lot of times the teams are composed of public and private partnerships, such as this case, where Oak Ridge National Lab came together with their partner from SPX and developed a transformer system to enable you to route power on the grid. The initial prototype worked so well from a cost and control point that when they got this particular device to its factory test, partnered with now Bonneville Power Authority to develop two more of these, and all three of these devices are expected to be installed on Bonneville's grid in the Pacific Northwest by this summer truly an important demonstration of a concept that only, you know, not that distant past was thought of as impossible. RPE also invests in energy efficiency, even in plants. Um, it's been the holy grail of biochemistry to be able to re-engineer the photosynthetic cycle so that you could fix carbon into the plant in a more efficient way. This would be important if we think about biofuel production, chemicals production, or even food production. But until now, it's actually never been possible. The team at UCLA has been able to demonstrate for the first time a synthetic carbon fixation cycle. What you're looking at is actually the first demonstration of this phenomenon. These two plants, their natural carbon fixation cycle is impaired. And as you can guess, the one on the right has a synthetic carbon fixation cycle embedded in it. 
and it's growing much better. So as we go forward, obviously early days, but if we can get even 10% more productivity out of the molecular level carbon fixation in plants, think of what, was, what it would do for everything we think about in use of plants for food, fuel, and chemical production. Really, really amazing. RPE also invests in things that will help us move products to the marketplace. The team here, industrial players, Ford and Arban Instruments, came together with Sandia National Lab and Montana Tech to develop the first high precision, high current battery testing system. And I know you're saying, Cheryl, battery testing system. But this is no ordinary battery testing system. This will allow us to actually test real vehicle cells with real loads and be able to see immediately the very most minute of trends, those minor trends that only historically over time we'd be able to see that they'd be leading us towards degradation of that battery. And so now we have this testing system we can look at, we can test out, we can learn a lot more about battery chemistries. But that is not really the most compelling part for me. The most compelling thing is that we are going to be able to enable battery developers to test much more quickly and much more lower cost batteries that can move forward into the market. And I know at least one major automotive manufacturer that's extremely interested in this outcome. And really exciting for us has been the fact that during the life of this project, and since last summer, hardware and software from these developments has already been incorporated into Arbonne's existing product line today. And they expect to have the high precision, high current testing system in the market during 2015. Now, RPE also invests in things that challenge our ideas about what's possible in processing. In this case, the team at CU Boulder came together with their partners from 3M, and they have put in place a really, really cool thin film composite membrane, of which you're looking at a micrograph here, because honestly, there's nothing you can do to make membranes look exciting on a slide. But this is so cool that you basically take the ionic liquid in the polymer system and you coat it very, very carefully across this pore support membrane to give it strength. And the porosity allows it to be lightweight. This system demonstrates the ability to take CO2 out of a flue gas stream at twice the rate of the currently known systems. And because it's so porous, you could calculate the cost of doing that to be as low as $15 per ton. Now, while this still has to go through more stability and durability testing, if these results remain true, it will truly change what we think about what's possible in carbon capture. Now, if you haven't uh, already guessed, RPE is extremely passionate about our entrepreneurs. And we fund them through our standard solicitations, but we also fund them through our own SBIR program. One of our SBIR program awardees, Energy Storage Systems, or ESS for short, has developed a new flow battery system, an all iron flow battery system. They've overcome the inherent limitations of iron chemistry to do with lifetime and efficiency in a really elegant way, componing um, composing both component and system level answers. On our project, they did a 10 kilowatt, hour, 10 kilowatt uh, demonstration, and they're currently scaling up their team, scaling up their process, and they're going to do 30 kilowatt beta demonstrations in the coming month. They have a multi million dollar sales pipeline in place, and they expect to close the first close of their Series A funding this month. And with that close, they join what I believe to be very illustrious companies of 34 RPE awardees have raised over $850 million in follow-on funding after our initial investment of $135 million. Not so bad. 
And last, but certainly not least, RPE invests in things that challenge all of our notions about what's possible. The team at Stanford has developed a device, shown here, that emits heat and reflects the sun, so that basically you can create passive cooling both day and night. Emissivity has been known in nighttime applications before, but obviously when you introduce the radiation from the sun, a much, much more complex um, and more challenging test. But they've demonstrated, a picture of it right here, the ability to get passive cooling of eight degrees Fahrenheit from ambient. Now that's really a lot. Now you can think about buildings, cars, cooling towers that could be cooled without having to use any electric power at all. So passive cooling day and night, sending the heat out into the infinite cold of the universe. And what a way to end the examples, right? And so here we are after six years at RPE. I think we're starting to make a difference. A difference as an agency and as an innovation community. Each and every one of you being part of this as members of project teams, as partners, as follow-on partners, as funders, as advisors, as members of this community, really moving ideas forward. We're tackling global problems and having tangible results. And so I welcome you again to the 2015 RPE Energy Innovation Summit. Make everything out of these three days that you can, the knowledge, the networks, meet people that might help you advance your idea, scale up your product, or even think of a whole new concept um, for the future. And on a personal note, this is my fourth summit. Last year was supposed to be my last one, but this actually is my last one, because I'll be leaving RPE next month. And so I wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you for the work that we've been able to do together here. And I look forward to working with you because in the small world of energy innovation, um, I think all of us need to use every one of our skills and resources and come together because then we will truly be able to change what is possible. Thank you very much.